Well, thank you. Um, again, I'm JP Walters. Uh, we've been doing a lot of cloud work over the last five years at ISI. Um, and so I'll be talking a little bit about the performance that we're, we're able to achieve with uh, GPU support and multi-node GPU support inside of OpenStack. So um, just as a brief outline, I'll go through our motivation for this work. Um, I'll talk just a little bit about our HPC cloud effort, a little background there, um, as well as some background on PCI pass-through and SRILV that are relevant to this discussion. Um, and then I've got some results before we conclude. So um, our whole motivation uh, for the HPC cloud work is that scientific workloads are being driven by increasing performance and greater power efficiency requirements. And this drives us towards specialization and heterogeneity. This isn't just a matter of GPU. Um, this is true in FPGAs, in DSPs, in all architectures. If you want greater performance now, you can't simply wait for clock speeds to increase. You have to drive towards specialization. Cloud, and in particular infrastructure as a service clouds, can democratize access to these types of accelerators. We can make them available on demand in the cloud to anybody who wants to spin up a, v uh, a virtual machine. But they're useful as an HPC resource only as long as we can meet our performance goals. Uh, HPC users don't want to take a 5x hit on their, uh, on their performance. So the question is, can we provide HPC class performance um, in the cloud? And this is, or has been, kind of an open question. Um, cloud computing is traditionally seen as a resource for IT, almost strictly IT. Uh, web servers, databases. Um, occasionally now, we're starting to hear more about Hadoop and so on in the cloud. Um, but traditionally, we don't think of the cloud for tightly coupled, uh, high-performance computing types of applications. Um, Still, though, uh, there is work that is going on. For example, uh, Amazon uh, Web Services, they have a virtual cluster that's sitting at 101 on the top 500 list. Um, from our perspective, the major difference between high-performance computing and IT in the cloud, though, is this issue of heterogeneity. Being able to ask for the types of resources that you need uh, and being able to spin up these accelerator type resources on demand. So our, con our contribution is that we've been developing heterogeneous HPC extensions for OpenStack, uh, the OpenStack cloud platform for about the last uh, five years. So for those of you who may not be aware, um, OpenStack is a widely used uh, uh, cloud platform. Uh, it's uh, in use for both public and private clouds. It was developed originally by Rackspace and NASA. Um, it's in use right now at Rackspace and HP, and HP uh, for their uh, public cloud offerings. So you can right now go to Rackspace or HP and spin up an OpenStack uh, VM. The current stable release is OpenStack Juno. In April, there'll be an OpenStack Kilo release. It's about every six months uh, a new release comes out. And so when we first started working with OpenStack, um, technologies like PCI pass-through and SRILV hadn't yet matured. And so we looked at different ways that we could um, access GPUs and other accelerators in the cloud. On the left, you see uh, sort of the main, the main motivation for why we went with uh, a modern PCI pass-through type um, approach. There are techniques like GVirtus, like Arcuda, that are basically GPU remoting or library interposing that allow you to access or even share GPUs inside of a virtual machine. The problem, though, uh, is that you end up cutting off your host-to-device bandwidth. Um, and different, different implementations have different limitations in this regard. They're not all sitting at you know, 500 megabytes per second. You can do a little bit better than that. But the point is, you're lopping off quite a bit compared to what we're looking at here, which is uh, uh, just non-virtualized, and this is an LXC-based approach, which is also uh, uh, kernel-level virtualization, but not um, 
not actual uh, hypervisor like virtualization. Um, but different applications have different requirements. So for example, if you were doing large enough matrix multiplies, uh, at some point you're able to actually meet something close to bare metal performance using a technique like this. Um, but given all that, uh, we felt that this was quite a bit of overhead um, and wasn't especially useful uh, to, the, to the broader HPC community. So we went and looked at um, PCI pass-through approaches. And this has really matured within the last couple of years. Um, you can now access a GPU inside of KVM, Zen, VMware, uh, and also LXC. And so we've run a bunch of benchmarks. I talked about this at last year's uh, GTC. And the important thing to note here, we're looking at the uh, shock kernels for a bunch of common signal processing um, uh, benchmarks. The important thing to note here is the y-axis is really zoomed in. We're looking at between 96% and 101% uh, relative performance, where higher is better. So if it's one, that means it's performing just like uh, native. If it's less than one, that means there's some overhead. If it's greater than one, it means that somehow this virtualized uh, or this PCI pass-through approach actually exceeded the base system's performance. We don't see that very often. Um, the main idea here, though, in PCI pass-through is that we're looking at a one-to-one -one mapping of physical devices to virtual machines. So in the figure here, um, we're showing multiple GPUs, GPU 0, 1, 2. We can map one to each of these VMs. We're using some uh, Zen nomenclature here, but it, it's basically the same approach used in KVM. Um, and that virtual machine gets exclusive access to that GPU for the time that that VM is spun up. Uh, the important thing to remember here, though, is that what we're doing is we're mapping a non-virtualized device into a virtual machine. So the GPU remains non-virtualized. Uh, it's only the virtual machine, the KVM, the base OS uh, inside of KVM that's actually running uh, a hypervisor. We can do something similar with SRILV. Um, SRILV is used commonly with networks. Um, and it allows you to partition a single physical device into multiple uh, virtual functions. So in the case that you have an InfiniBand adapter, for example, you can have one physical Mellanox InfiniBand adapter, carve it into a whole bunch of virtual functions, and pass each of these virtual functions into a VM as if it were any other PCIe device. So it looks like a whole bunch of uh, virtual PCIe um, devices. And this is important because the, the single node test that I showed um, earlier with VMware and Zen, these are single node, uh, these are single node tests. And it's relatively easy, and nowadays it's relatively common to see benchmarks run inside of a single virtual machine you see that hypervisor overhead is very low. You see that you can run on a single VM uh, with a GPU and performance is right around 99% efficiency. But the real question is, can you extend this to multi-node? Um, that's where we tend to see overhead uh, in the cloud today. We see overhead once we go out onto a network. Um, and so that's the, the test that we're looking at um, today. So we're looking at testing multi-node performance with InfiniBand SRILV and GPU Direct across um, three different benchmarks. The uh, LAMPS molecular dynamics simulation, um, the OSU micro benchmarks, and WhoMD. We have uh, four nodes in this case that are equipped with K20 and K40 GPUs. We're using ConnectX3 InfiniBand um, with a relatively modern kernel and, and uh, OFED. Uh, and this is all running inside of the KVM hypervisor. So this is uh, the LAMPS Rhodopsin uh, uh, performance. What we're looking at here uh, is four nodes under several different configurations. So the uh, uh, LAMPS is interesting in that we can, um, we can use both CPUs and GPUs at the same time. Most applications you spin up a GPU and you send data to it, you wait for it to, to finish, 
you then send the next batch of data to it. LAMPS is interesting because we can actually put all these CPUs to work. It's a heterogeneous application, um, and so we can get a sense of hypervisor overhead, both for CPU and uh, on the GPU side of things. So what we're looking at here are a couple of different configurations. One that's using all of the, all of the CPUs in the cluster, that's the uh, 32C, that's 32 cores with four GPUs. We look at that both non-virtualized and virtualized. And we're looking at a second configuration that is a single CPU allocated to a single GPU. That's the four cores and four GPUs. And they perform a little bit differently. Um, for relatively small problem sizes, the overhead of spinning up all of these CPUs, getting them all going, um, isn't really worth it. Uh, so we see that we get a little bit better performance um, for the, uh, the one CPU, one GPU case. Uh, but in either case, uh, performance overhead due to virtualization is actually quite small. So what we see here, um, the difference between uh, uh, non-virtualized in the blue line and vir virtualized in the red uh, and the same down here is about 3%. And it actually decreases as the size of the problem increases. So that we're at about 99% efficiency once we have a... Uh, uh, relatively large problem size. We can also look at the uh, Leonard Jones simulation, and here we see the same thing. Um, we have a little bit of overhead for uh, a, a couple of relatively small problem sizes. As the uh, problem size increases, we're at about 1% to 2% overhead um, in either case. So as I said, we're looking at about 96 to 99% efficiency um, in the uh, virtualized cases. Uh, by and large, the performance gap decreases with increasing problem size. That's not a huge surprise. We're sending a whole bunch of data to the GPUs, so we were able to amortize the, uh, any of the uh, uh, virtualized overhead. But still, we've looked at relatively small systems here we really need to uh, validate these kinds of results across much, much larger systems than uh, for nodes. Um, next, we're looking at, the, at adding GPU direct to the equation. So uh, in the previous results, we were seeing just straight SRILV with MPI uh, and a GPU. We can also do uh, GPU direct inside of the virtual machines, and so we wanted to uh, both validate uh, GPU direct inside of VMs and also see what kind of performance overhead we get due to virtualization. Um, so using the OSU uh, GPU direct microbenchmarks, we can look at first latency. And these results are actually pretty encouraging. You can barely see a little bit of overhead for very small problem sizes between, say, 1 and 128 bytes. If we zoom in on those, we can see a very tiny overhead that settles down, uh, and we're almost indistinguishable from native um, there on out. We can also look at bandwidth. Um, here again, we see very near native performance across the board. We actually see an interesting effect right here, where the, uh, where the virtualized case actually gets slightly higher bandwidth than um, the uh, native case. This is, uh, this is actually due to caching. Uh, in the VM, so I, I wouldn't uh, take away from this run your application in a VM and it'll run faster. Um, but sometimes you do see these interesting cache effects. So we can run that um, with a, uh, a real application. It's one thing to look at this from the perspective of micro benchmarks. Um, it's another to look at it from a real application. So here we're looking at uh, WhoMD from one to four nodes uh, of size 256K particles. Um, and we see two things in this figure. Uh, this upper line here, there are actually two lines, uh, a, a blue and a red. Uh, those are the uh, uh, VM with GPU direct and the base with GPU direct. So we can see uh, that performance is actually very near native. And this second set of lines below it, that is actually both VM and uh, non-virtualized without GPU direct. So right off the bat, we get about uh, 8 to 10 percent uh, performance boost by, just by using uh, GPU direct for this benchmark. Um, and we're also very near native uh, uh, in the virtualized case at the same time. 
So um, what we can take away from this is a, a GPU direct, A, it works inside of a VM, it works very efficiently. Um, and we're able to get about a 10% improvement. Uh, the SRILV in interconnect uh, results in less than 2% overhead. Uh, but like the LAMPS results, we do still need to validate these on much larger uh, systems. So um, moving forward, uh, we've published these results in a couple of papers. For anybody who's interested, uh, feel free to either look these up or send me an email um, offline, and I'm happy to point you to links for this. Um, in terms of next steps, uh, we really need to, as I said, extend the uh, scalability analysis. We need to see what this looks like in hundreds and thousands of nodes um, to see where, where these efficiencies break down. Um, and we're actively integrating this into our uh, OpenStack work as well. Um, for anyone who's interested, our code can be found on uh, GitHub. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions.